Hey guys, it's Katie. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about all of the books that I read in 2019 and my reading stats. I recently put up my favorite books of 2019 video and my least favorite books of 2019. So I'll have those videos linked down below in the description if you want to go more into the best and the worst of this year, but this is going to be a whole overview of the year, full year wrap up. Also go into some of the stats and stuff, which I love. I don't know why, I really love statistics, numbers and stuff, so I think it's really interesting. We'll see if future editing Katie is in a really good mood and links all the books down below. And thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community that I've been using for almost a year now. They have a really wide variety of different classes, so I've had fun just kind of popping around to the different sections on their site and trying out a bunch of different topics. I've done writing classes, business classes, finance, freelance. They have graphic design, lifestyle, photography, videography, basically anything you could possibly want to try. They have a class for it. Memberships are super affordable. It's less than $10 per month. I actually just recently started this class about bookkeeping for freelancing, which I'm really, really enjoying and I'm finding super helpful. I started my freelance business last year and it's already more than doubled in size and I'm starting to realize anything to get a little more serious about treating it as a business and learning how to manage all of my finances and stuff and so this class has been really helpful so if one of your new year's resolutions for 2020 is to brush up on a skill that you currently have maybe try something new Skillshare is offering a deal for my viewers to get two months for free and that gives you unlimited access to all of their different classes give you a little taste test of what they have to offer I think you'll fall in love with them just like I have so I'll have the link down below in my description if you want to try a two-month free trial so without further ado let's get straight into the video I think we'll start with the stats and then I'll get into all of the books that I read this year. I'll leave timestamps down below in the description if you want to jump to one or the other. So overall, 2019, I read 64 published books. I didn't start keeping track of the books that I edited and beta read for my freelance services until this year. So I am estimating I probably did like 10. I think it's a conservative guess, but so we'll round up and we'll say I read 75 books this year. But then also I was thinking about it with my writing life. I worked on four books of my own. I finished editing a YA contemporary. I finished writing my sci-fi. I started and finished writing a draft of my NaNoWriMo and I started and finished writing a draft of my new poetry collection. So I read 75 books. I wrote four books. Plus I graduated college, had to write all of that stuff for my final portfolio and stuff to graduate. So it's been a busy, very reading and writing heavy year for me. Now going into those 64 books, I read 22,646 pages, not including the beta reads. The shortest book I read was Inner Demons by Sarah Cannon, which was 164 pages. And the longest book I read was Layer of Dreams by Libba Bray, which was 613 pages. My most popular book was my reread of Vampire Academy that's had 570,838 people read it. And then my least popular was Crashing the A-List by Summer Heacock, which only 1,209 people have read. My average rating for 2019 was 3.8. That seems very reasonable to me. I rate most books three or four stars, so that makes sense. And then the highest rated thing that I read was Almost Home by Madison Kuhn, which is a poetry collection. And then the first review that I wrote that year on Goodreads was For the Other Einstein by Mary Benedict. And the last review that I wrote that year was for Recursion by Blake Crouch. Now, in addition to my average rating, I also calculated individually how many books got which star ratings. I rated 17 books, five out of five stars. 23 got four out of five stars. 13 got three stars. Five got two stars. Three got one star. And I had two DNFs. All in all, I think it's a good balance. As you'll see, as we go through the books, I also had a pretty wide range of genres this year. I definitely branched out more with my reading, especially in the second half of the year. And this is one of the few years when I was in college when I wasn't taking a literature class because I finished all of those before my senior year. I don't really have a ton of books that I had to read for classes. So I don't have like classics or things like that. And so I was kind of worried, oh, maybe I didn't really branch out with my reading as much because usually when I have a class force me to read a book, it helps me find new books. But looking at my piles over here, so I keep looking over here. But looking at all of the books that I read, I think I did a pretty good job on my own of trying to force myself to branch out. So I'm not gonna go like super in depth on the synopsis for every single book because we would be here forever. So now let's just get into all of the books that I read last year. My first read of the year was How She Died, How I Lived by Mary Crockett. This was one of my professors in college, so I wanted to support her debut YA novel. I gave this one a four out of five stars. Second, I picked up The Other Einstein by Mary Benedict. This was like a blind date with a book. I have a whole video that I did at the beginning of the year where I just picked up books that I knew nothing about to read and this one I ended up giving a three out of five stars. I liked it but this was really difficult to read. It was infuriating. Next I picked up You Are a Badass at Making Money by Jen Sincero. 
I think I listened to this on audiobook. I gave this one a four out of five stars. I enjoyed this so much more than I was expecting to and I'm actually planning on rereading it this year. After that I read You Are a Badass Every Day by Jen Sincero. For some reason it doesn't have a rating on Goodreads. I'm gonna fix that right now because I would have given it a one out of five stars. I really didn't like this. I didn't really find any value in it. It's the third book in Jen Sincero's Badass trilogy. You are a badass, you are a badass at making money, you are a badass every day. And this is literally just regurgitating stuff from the first two books. There's nothing new in here. I think you can definitely skip this one. After that I read Broken Things by Lauren Oliver. I usually really like Lauren Oliver's books but this one was just kind of so-so for me and I gave it a three out of five stars. After that I read one of my favorite books of the year which was Verity by Colleen Hoover. Gave it a five out of five stars and this started me off strong with my desire to read all of the thrillers this year. After that I read How to Fall in Love with Anyone which is a collection of essays. This author went to the same college as me and so she came to speak to my class and I enjoyed this a lot more than I was expecting to and I gave it a four out of five stars. After that I picked up Never World Wake by Marisha Pussell. If you know me you know that Night Film by Marisha Pussell is one of my all-time favorite books so I wanted to try her first young adult attempt and it was good. It wasn't great. Definitely not compared to Night Film for me and I gave it a 3.75 four out of five stars. After that I read The Cruel Prince by Holly Black and quickly became obsessed with this series this year. I gave this one a five out of five stars. I am so happy I picked this up when I did. It was towards the end of my senior year. I hadn't read that much in the year so far, especially not young adult. I was kind of in a reading slump and I had kind of thought maybe the like fangirl in me had died and I wasn't capable of just freaking out over a book and being over dramatic anymore. And this book made me realize that the fangirl in me is alive and well. So after that I jumped straight into The Wicked King by Holly Black which is the sequel. I gave this one a four out of five stars. Didn't love it as much as the first one but still really liked it. After that I read The Cheerleaders by Kara Thomas. This is a YA thriller. I found this one pretty disappointing and I gave it a three out of five stars. It wasn't terrible but it wasn't anything special. After that I read Easy by Tamara Weber. This is a new adult romance that really tackles rape and victim blaming. I gave it a four out of five stars. One of the best new adult romances that I've read. I would really recommend this one. After that I read Glass Houses by Rachel Kane, the first book in the Morganville Vampire series. This was not it for me. I gave it a two out of five stars. I was really disappointed. I think I would have liked this a lot more if I'd read this like 10 years ago. And then after that I read Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. I also gave this one a two out of five stars. I hit a little bump in the road with the reading around this time of year. I wasn't liking anything that I was picking up. After that I read The Devouring Grey by Christine Lynn Herman and I gave this one a 3.75 out of 5 stars. I liked it. It was super atmospheric and creepy but it didn't meet my really high expectations. And I definitely got some like Riverdale vibes from this. After that I read Girl Stop Apologizing by Rachel Hollis. I listened to this on audiobook. This was at the very beginning of the summer when I started my first job out of school and I was commuting a ton. I was riding the train like an hour there and an hour back every day. And so I was listening to a lot of these like self-help motivational audiobooks in the morning to try and get me through the day and I gave this a five out of five stars. It did exactly what I wanted it to. It got me really excited about my day. It was a good pep talk kind of read. After that I read Tiny Pretty Things by Sonia Sherapatwara. This is the first book in a duology I believe and I gave this a three out of five stars. It's about competitive ballet dancers and the girl on girl hate cattiness and just pointless high school drama was just a little too much for me at this point in my life. After that I read Everything is Fucked, a book about hope by Mark Manson. This is one of my least favorite books that I read this year. I gave it a one out of five stars. I would not recommend it. Just oh my god. It made me mad. After that this was the first month that I started my book club which I run over on my Patreon page and our first book that we read together was An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. I specified on Goodreads that quality wise I would give this a five out of five stars. Enjoyment wise I would give it a four out of five stars. I think these books are really well done but for whatever reason it didn't have that spark for me. So it's not a new favorite but still a really good book. After that I read I Miss You When I Blink by Mary Laura Filippo. This is also a collection of essays and it's one of my favorite books that I read last year. Highly recommend this one. Five out of five stars. Then I read Finale by Stephanie Garber. This is the last book in the Caraval series. I gave this one a four to five stars. It was a fun time, not a super memorable conclusion for me. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised I gave it a four to five stars. Probably somewhere more between three and four now that I'm looking back on it. But the series is really fun. It's just not one of my favorites. She didn't really land the ending for me. Next I read The Towering Sky by Catherine McGee. As you can see I was wrapping up all of my series at this point in the year. This is the last book in the Thousandth Floor series and I really didn't like this conclusion. I think I gave this one a two out of five stars. I found it overly long, kind of pointless, poorly written, inconsistent, 
I'm just frustrating. After that, I read 100 Days of Sunlight by Abby Emmons. This was another one of my least favorite books that I read this year. I gave this a two out of five stars. It's unfortunate because it's written by an author tuber, which is why I got an Archivix. I wanted to support her, but I had so many issues with this book that unfortunately, it didn't do it for me. Then I picked up some nonfiction. I read Maybe You Should Talk to Someone by Lori Godlib. This is a really deep dive into therapy and I really really enjoyed this one way more than I was expecting to and I gave this one a five out of five stars. Starting from here on is when I started to dabble in the romance genre and as you will see there were more misses than hits with this one. I read Fix Her Up by Tessa Bailey, ended up giving this a three out of five stars. This is not the worst romance book that we have to talk about in this video but it still wasn't good. After that I read King of Scars by Lee Bardugo. I was disappointed with this one, pretty underwhelmed. I also gave this a three out of five stars and frankly I don't think I'm gonna read the sequel. Next I read one of my favorite books of the year which was Girls with Sharp Sticks by Suzanne Young. I was anticipating giving this a five out of five stars because I had enjoyed it so much throughout the book. The ending kind of trickled off for me so I ended up giving it a four out of five stars but I would still highly recommend the book. After that I read A Torch Against the Night by Saba Tahir which is the sequel to An Ember in the Ashes. I also gave this one a five out of five stars. These books are really really well done, really well written fantasy. For whatever reason they are just not my favorite but objectively I can recognize how well done they are. Next we have The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. This is one of the few romance books that I read last year that I liked. I gave this one a four out of five stars stars. It was fun, it was cute, I flew right through it. Would recommend. After that I decided to pick up another Christina Lauren book so I read Autobiography and this is actually a YA contemporary romance and this one was really cute, touching, heartwarming, really enjoyed this. Gave this one a four out of five stars as well. After that I picked up Brightly Burning by Alexa Dunn. Alexa Dunn is also an author tuber here on YouTube. I really love her videos, wanted to support her work, and I really enjoyed her book. I gave it a four out of five stars as well. It's a YA sci-fi retelling of Jane Eyre and I liked it more than I was expecting to. Our next book club pick was Never Night by Jay Kristoff. This was amazing and I gave it a five out of five stars. After that I got back to reading some thrillers and I picked up Sometimes I Lie by Alice Feeney. I gave this a four out of five stars, maybe more like a 3.75 out of 5 stars. I really didn't like this book for the first like half of it. The ending redeemed it for me a little bit but it was rough to get through. After that I picked up Dead Until Dark by Charlene Harris which is the first Suki Stackhouse book. My intent had been to read this whole series this year and you will see we took a turn with that. I gave this first book a 4 out of 5 stars just because it was so fun and exactly what I was in the mood for for like a trashy paranormal romance. The writing was really rough but the story was fun and I liked the show True Blood so I thought maybe I would like the books. But then after that I picked up the second book which was Living Dead in Dallas and I gave this one a 2 out of 5 stars and the books kind of lost that charm to me and I just really wasn't enjoying it anymore. So after that I picked up Lock Every Door by Riley Sager which is another adult thriller and I gave this one a five out of five stars. I loved this one. I flew through it. I had so much fun with it. Next I read The Program by Suzanne Young since I enjoyed Girls with Sharp Sticks so much earlier in the year I wanted to try more of her work and I already owned this one. I gave this one a four out of five stars. I enjoyed this a lot more than I was expecting to. I also planned to go on with the rest of the series this year but I heard iffy things about the rest of the series so... I never ended up picking up the second one. After that we have another one of my favorite reads of the year which was Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. This is an adult fantasy novel. Highly recommend the audiobook for this one. Five out of five stars. After that I read A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmerer. I gave this one a five out of five stars. I'm surprised by that because it wasn't like a favorite for me but I did really enjoy this book. It's a YA retelling of Beauty and the Beast and I actually just picked up the sequel from Barnes and Noble the other day. It's sitting over there somewhere. After that we got back to trying some romance. I read Deal with the Devil by Megan March and I gave this a one out of five stars. I hated this book. I've ranted about this book in several videos now. It was just so bad. <laughs> but then after that I picked up A Lesson in Thorns by Sierra Simone which is another romance novel and I gave this one a four out of five stars. I really liked this one. It's super atmospheric. I think it's really well written and this one gave me hope that there would be other romance books out there that I would like. After that I read The Darkest Part of the Forest by Holly Black. Was super disappointed with this one. I found it very underwhelming. Three out of five stars. Going back to to some thrillers. I read The Arrangement by Robin Harding. I've been recommending this a lot in recent videos. I loved this one. Four out of five stars. Then I read Paranormalcy by Kirsten White. This is a YA paranormal romance. It was really cute. It was fun. I wish I would have read this like six or seven years ago but I still gave it a four out of five stars. Maybe like a 3.75 out of five stars. And then our next book club pick was Sorcery of Thorns. This one had a lot of buzz around it when I picked it up and I think the 
hype kind of killed it for me a little bit because I went in with really high expectations and then I was just a little underwhelmed. I still gave it a four out of five stars. I think I need to reread it. After that, I read one of my favorite books of the year. It was Layer of Dreams by Libba Bray. I'm obsessed with this series right now. This is the second book in the Diviner series. The fourth book comes out next month. I'm so excited. These books are so good. I totally fell in love with them this year. Five out of five stars. All of the stars. After that, I read Tunnel of Bones by Victoria Chua. This is a middle grade book. It's the sequel to City of Ghosts, which I read last Halloween, or I guess two Halloweens ago now. It was cute. I gave it a four out of five stars, although enjoyment wise, probably more like a three out of five stars. But I've just kind of realized that I have a hard time with middle grade books and I don't really tend to connect with them as much. So I tried to rate it based on the quality of the book rather than my enjoyment of it. After that, I read Feast of Sparks by Sierra Simone. This is the sequel to A Lesson in Thorns, which if you recall from two minutes ago, I loved. This book, I gave a one out of five stars to and it was a miracle that I finished it. This was in my worst books of the year video and I mean it when I say it's one of the worst books ever. It was so bad. After that, thank goodness, I had a streak of some really good books. I read The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware, which is an adult thriller, and I gave this one a five out of five stars. I had so much fun with this one. The ending, I love thrillers that just have endings that kill me, and this one had such a good ending. After that, our next book club pick was Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo. I gave this one a four out of five stars. I enjoyed it, not as much as I was hoping to. I think the root of a lot of my problems is having too high of expectations. It was still fun, and I see so much potential with this series in this world that I will be reading the future books. After that, I read Beautiful Demons by Sarah Cannon, who is also an author tuber here on YouTube, whose videos I really, really love. So I wanted to support her books. This was fun. This was cute. Another high school paranormal romance kind of deal. I gave it a three out of five stars. And then after that, I started my Vampire Academy reread. So I read the first book, Vampire Academy, which I gave it a five out of five stars to, mostly for nostalgia's sake. I have a whole reading blog for this. It was really fun. After that, I read Before the Devil Breaks You by Luba Bray the third book in the Diviner series it was so freaking good. Take away from this year, this series is one of my favorites for sure. It's one of the most memorable for me of the year of just like loving this series. Five out of five stars. If you haven't started this series yet, you have to. And if you've only read The Diviners, you have to move on because it gets so much better from the second book on. After that, I picked up Inner Demons by Sarah Cannon, the second book and her Shadow Demon Saga also gave this one a three out of five stars. Then I picked up The Queen of Nothing by Holly Black. This was one of my most disappointing reads of the year. I still gave it a 3.75 stars, but I have a whole reading vlog of this one if you want to know my thoughts on it, but I was really disappointed. Next we have Almost Home by Madison Kuhn, a collection of poetry. I liked this one. I gave it a three out of five stars. And then continuing with my Vampire Academy reread, I picked up Frostbite by Rochelle Mead. I gave this one a three out of five stars. I originally gave this a four out of five stars the first time I read it. And then with my reread, I dropped it a star. I think this is my least favorite book in the series, but I still enjoyed it. There's a reading vlog for it. After that, I read Recursion by Blake Crouch, which is an adult sci-fi thriller. I gave this a five out of five stars. This one messed with my head. This one screwed me up. After that, I read Bitter Demons by Sarah Cannon, the third book in her Shadow Demon Saga. Also gave this one a three out of five stars. Then I read Sick Kids and Love by Hannah Moskowitz, the YA contemporary romance, and I gave this a four out of five stars. I loved this a lot more than I was expecting to. And then my final read of 2019 was The Afterlife of Holly Chase by Cynthia Hand. And I gave this one a four out of five stars. I didn't love it as much as I was expecting to also. I went in with really high expectations for this one, but the ending I really, really loved. It was a fun YA retelling of A Christmas Carol. I've been meaning to read it for years. I was really glad I finally got to it. And it was a solid last read of the year. So yeah, those are all of the books that I read in 2019. 2019! was a pretty solid reading year, I would say. I'm very happy with that. I would love to hear down below in the comments about how your reading year went in 2019. Let me know some of your stats, some of your favorite, least favorite books, just how the year went for you overall. I would be really interested to know. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new here, I would love it if you would subscribe and stick around. I put up at least two to three new videos every single week. Don't forget to go check out that link down below in the description for Skillshare also if you're interested in trying them out. All my links are down below in the description if you want to come follow me elsewhere. I'd appreciate it if you'd give this video a thumbs up and I'll just see you guys in my next video very very soon. Bye. So hit me. So hit me. So hit me. First a confession. With you, I feel a connection. With